Bob, there's a new theater in town. And Not we, again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, always, always. They, they, we can't, it's like mushrooms. We can't stop them. And we have the artistic team behind the new theater with us. So welcome to Ron Strawbridge and Suki Peters. Thank you. Thank you. And, and tell us the name of your new theater. The Cherokee Street Theater Company. Mm -hmm. That's what we call it. Yeah. And we just saw a terrific show there. It was mm -hmm. a parody of the movie Gremlins, mm -hmm. and it was a real, real treat. So how did you happen on that as your first show? <laughs> well, Ron was like, I think this is a go. We want to do this, yes. and let's do this. Let's come up with a Christmas show. And so we started just kind of spitballing ideas. Um, and we came upon that one. There were some real winners that we just <laughs> had. <laughs> <laughs> that we may mm, circle back, I know, maybe. I thought it was one of those things. Yeah, He-Man, yeah. She-Ra, Christmas Spectacular. Yes, that would have been a nice one, too. Yeah, but, um, but at Gremlin, the, the Gremlins. original movie was a Christmas-themed mm -hmm. movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, it certainly, it, I mean, it's, in some ways, it, it was a parody itself of horror-type movies. Yes. And so you have certainly both have had experience in working in, in parodies at Magic Smoking Monkey Theater. Mm -hmm. Uh, you both veterans of that, and I guess you just really like that that genre. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love the. I mean, I love doing all kinds of shows. And when I was doing shows regularly, but I think Smoking Monkey gave you that kind of break to go ahead and play. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about having fun, right. um, having this real kind of kind of different kind of fun. And yeah, so I, I loved it. I, I looked for that, and I had lots of fun doing that. Yeah. But what I liked particularly about this pr production of Gremlins was that. Although the people on stage were having fun, they, they didn't have fun for themselves. They were doing what they were doing for the audience. And sometimes these parody shows, people are so involved in what they enjoy that they don't quite recognize that that doesn't always come across to the audience. But, that, but it really did in Gremlins. Thank you. That's why you have to have Suki. Yes, well, I, I think we agree with that. Do, do you have any, any directing tricks that help <laughs> help you with that? Um, to embrace the chaos with a dose of discipline. Mm -hmm. um, it, we go into this always as like a very collaborative thing, right? So we'll take the script and we'll adapt it and we'll like kind of whittle it down to like the time allowance and thinking mm -hmm. kind of like, well, it'll be about an hour if we do this, this, cut this, or change this. And then we throw it to the actors and then we just, it's throwing spaghetti against a wall. Yeah. What sticks, what works really well, what cracks us up, what cracks up, cracks up the audience, mm -hmm what's consistent, what's clean, and just really making that and honing that. And so we sort of collaborate for like the first three weeks of the whole process as we're getting off book and as we're adding in blocking and, and fights and whatnot. And then we just refine it until we get to what really works, what's really clean, crisp, and sells. I know um, a lot of, a lot so of the best humor are, are these lines that are thrown away at the end of something serious mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. just puncture everything <laughs> that went. Yeah. Now, the buttons. Yes. Yeah, are, th are yeah. those are those often ad libs that people make, or or do you script a lot of those? Depends. Yeah, it really does. I mean, I mean, my experience is that as an actor in it, um, there are moments, there are these things that you realize that that is exactly what when you mm -hmm. saw the thing for the first time, you're like, but why? <laughs> right? And right. So, and really realize that that is what the audience is going to be feeling in that moment, and you just, like, but vocalizing that is perfect, right? And other times, mm -hmm. it is written. Perfectly, yes. Now, in addition to a new company, you also had a new venue, which we've never mm -hmm. been to before. Tell us a little about that. Mm. It's a, a place called Treff Punk. That's its name. It was the St. Michael Church on Potomac and South Jefferson. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, got an upper sanctuary, and we actually did this show in the basement. We thought about doing an up, upper sanctuary, but it's not conditioned uh, for us to do that right right, right now. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's owned by Southside Spaces, a uh, gentleman named Jason Deem. Who uh, was, a, who was a, one of the like original people to invest in that that, that part of town? And it's really only one block south of of uh, Cherokee Street. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. That's exactly right. So it's, it, we're we're right in that district. So there's Marina Villa and Ben Park West mm -hmm. and, and and all those other communities there. That so yeah, that we, we consider the Cherokee Street district. And, and do you, do you have plans going forward to continue using this space or maybe another one around there? That is an awesome question. <laughs> so um, we are talking to Southside Spaces about some of the things we want to do in that space and, and the upper sanctuary, but we're also talking to other folks on the street too. Um, uh, there's a show that we're thinking about doing, we're totally going to do. Uh, <laughs> we're doing that <laughs> we're, show. We're totally going to do the Tickets show. are already on yeah, sale. Yeah, they're on sale. Tickets are on sale. Uh, so get your tickets now. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> wow. I just did that. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, for us, I mean, one of the things about the name of the theater was I know 
um, when you first think about it, it, it makes sense to say, hey, um, it's, it's attached to this location. But Cherokee right. Street District goes all the way from Gravoy all the way down to Limp, sure. right? Mm -hmm. So right. it's that, when people think about Cherokee, that's, that's the size of it, right? And there are plenty of venues that are perfect for certain shows that we should be pushing for. I mean, there's Castle and Ball, ball, Ballroom there too, right? Mm -hmm. And imagine in the future there, there could be shows or shows that we think that would be perfect to be set there, right? And that really were the Cherokee Street company and so yeah. we'll, we'll take the whole dang street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is the uh, the old sanctuary, is it, is it a possibility for doing shows? Yes, or? we are definitely, we're talking to Southside Spaces and Jason about it, about what are the things needed to go ahead and kind of sound condition the place, right? But also what's going to be needed to go ahead and get a stage in there and then what future grants would be available to go ahead and convert that space into a more uh, more regular <laughs> theater space or performance space. Yeah. Um, so it's a space that can hold 250 people comfortably. Um, I think that's a great number for us because we, again, we believe that we're in that community because we want to support that community. We, we, we want to draw some of the things we do from, from that community. Um, we want to edify the community and some of the things that we're doing. I think we did that with Gremlins. Yeah. Uh, people were very excited about it. Um, it's weird to walk down the street now. I, I can't really hide from people. So <laughs> they, they point at me and go, Gremlins dude. And I'm like, that's <laughs> great. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, um, and a lot of hugs. So it's cool. So yeah, um, that space we're definitely going to look at it and figure out ways to go ahead and, and use it in the future. Um, but my sense is there are theater companies that are um, that don't have a home, um, and that what I, what I'd love to do in the future is that we know we want to do a certain number of shows per year. But if we, I'm happy to partner with someone to go ahead in the space and, and allow allow this those venues or several venues to go ahead and house more of this work that's happening that I only get to find out like in, from rumors and or Facebook and stuff like that. But I'd, I'd love to see more art on Cherokee, right? Of this kind of stuff, the stuff that I've done in the past. So you were in a, a new space. Did people find you nonetheless for Gremlins? Did you have good attendance? Mm -hmm. we, we, I, we, had, we had great attendance for being this kind of experiment, this first time for mm -hmm. us doing it. If you look at the, some of the, the numbers and the demographics behind what we were doing, about 56% of the people that came were people that had, we probably seen some, uh, monkey shows, or I'd seen other shows in St. Louis, but the others were mm -hmm. folks we met online mm -hmm. who hadn't seen theater since high school, right? And that yeah. uh -huh. we were able to, through Instagram and Facebook, and really push really, really hard and, pr and pull, pull some of those folks in. So it was pretty amazing. It was yeah. pretty amazing, the, the mix that we got. So we are very, we're very confident that we've reached folks who um, may understand Cherokee Street, may eat there, and may go down there to drink and hang out, uh, who may go to concerts at off-Broadway and places close mm -hmm. by, but have not been to theater. And so we're very, very happy with that. We're very happy. Well, if you know how to use social media, you're way ahead in the game in these <laughs> days. Well, but people worry about the aging of the theater audience, but Magic Smoking Monkey, certainly. And in fact, the, the Shakespeare, St. Louis Shakespeare, yes. generally seemed to get us surprisingly high percentage of younger people, yeah. I, I suppose the parodies especially, right. yeah. and you've certainly tapped into the same thing, haven't you? I, I think it just, it helps when I already have framework for the story, right? It definitely helps the audience. Per, it, so the risk, in, and I talked to a lot of people about this, they'd seen the show, and the risk in seeing the show is what if they don't understand the show, if they don't like the show, but if I say, hey, I have something that's very familiar that you may have seen when you were eight, sorry, you should have been older. Um, <laughs> And you saw it, and that, and I could say, hey, here's a time we're going to put on it. We're, we're going to say it's going to be no longer than this. Right. The confidence um, uh, level became higher, and so folks went ahead and took that risk, right? Um, and so I think that's what that's what we saw. Um, a lot of people taking this little bit of risk on us and going down there and seeing it and walking away, super surprised at mm -hmm. what they got to take in, and that. Yes, there's all types of theater to be enjoyed out there, and we're offering a slice. And, of it, yeah. and what yeah. I, what plans do you have to follow up on your success in Gremlins? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for spring, for April, we'll yes. be running for three weeks a parody of Kill Bill volumes one and two. Oh, well, Very you excited. know, I, it's fu it's interesting you should mention that because I just noticed that it's coming back to Netflix on the, on January first. So oh. it's perfect. <laughs> it's like we're working together. Yeah, <laughs> hey. it's like when the Baby Yoda memes came out with Gremlins. We're like, hey, that's good timing. Yeah, right? I'm sure Netflix <laughs> saw that you were planning to do this, and that's right, why they, yeah. they did call us. Yeah. We're in Netflix. <laughs> Huge audience in St. Louis. For we're us. on speed dial. <laughs> yeah, they call. They go. What are you guys doing next? I don't know. And, yeah. and and what? Uh, have you started working on the script or? 
Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have. Um, we've got it narrowed down to 200 pages, so we still have <laughs> a lot of work yeah. left. Um, it's it's a beast, but that's yeah. that's what we want to do, right? It's one of those things, like, if you're not a little bit scared of what you're doing, then you're not producing the True. best thing you that's can. Exactly right. And I, I guess one of the, the major challenges of that show would be all of the martial arts. Mm -hmm. mm, I think I, I, yeah, it sounds like <laughs> opportunity, yes. right? I, I mean, there's a lot of ways to stage this thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, we, and we could do it very small if we wanted to, or we could just do it in a very dope, amazing, huge way. With and, the splatter zone. Uh, with splatter zone, right? And so we have an official splatter zone. So when you go online to buy tickets, you can buy splatter zone tickets, right? Um, or you can ah. uh, you can buy very cautionary tickets. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> splatter zone. But the idea is that I mean, it's the the, the fights are so big, um, mm -hmm. it, they're so wonderful, and it's a mm -hmm. thing that people remember about these different characters. And that if we're going to do this thing, we have to go ahead and represent mm -hmm. those elements of it in this kind of fantastic, almost. I didn't expect that way, right? Mm -hmm. I love live theater because um, when people compare it to seeing a movie, and I love movies, I have nothing against movies, there's something about an audience member being 200 feet or 100 feet or 50 feet away from the thing that's happening that all of a sudden becomes more dangerous <laughs> and more exciting. <laughs> well, so you had yeah. a little splatter zone in, uh, in Gremlins, we didn't did. you? Yeah. A little, yeah. 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 Just yeah. water. Yeah, the water. And some cookies. And some cookies, yeah. some candy. Yeah. <laughs> it's holidays. And you yeah. were very flexible about how you use the theater with, I mean, not just using the space in front of people, but on the sides, mm -hmm. both sides, to have scenes. And it was very flowing, very, you know, it, it, it moved very quickly. You. Yeah, that was that was Suki's direction again. Well, right? but whenever yeah. you're taking a movie, right, yeah. you've got to try to keep it just that that fluidity needs to just keep rolling. Otherwise, well, I gather you hung the black curtains yeah. up there, right? Mm -hmm. Ron. <laughs> I mean, they, they they weren't there when you moved. Oh in. yeah, no, 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 no. But yeah. but it was your idea then to use them the way you did mm -hmm. to, uh, to have people coming out of the curtains, as yeah. it were. Yeah. yeah. And then that weird little kitchen window, we're like, oh, yeah. let's yeah. just yeah. use it. Let's I mean, see what we can do. For years, people got like. Breakfast and coffee and donuts <laughs> out of that window. And so now, predictable. And now it was, uh, it was a DJ and uh, other things happening. Gremlins. Yeah, Gremlins came yeah. out of there. So, yeah. I think uh, the uh, Southwest Spaces, when I came down to see the show on that Wednesday preview night, they were blown away about how we had, were using the space. Because mm -hmm. I think in their minds, when you buy something, you put your heart and love into it and you refer because they spent a lot of money and effort yeah. to refurbish that, that place, um, that you have a certain kind of idea about what how it's going to be used. And if you look at it without the curtains in it, it re feels like. Um, like old school kind of um, like jazz club kind of thing, mm -hmm. and so when we when, when they walked in on that Wednesday, they were like, oh, but like, a, yay, <laughs> this is really amazing. What, yeah, we're gonna see some real theater, and I believe I believe that's what he said. We, yeah, real theater. Yeah. So. Well, now Ron, I remember you from several recent Magic Smoking Monkey shows, but mm -hmm. it had what was your theater experience before that? Um, I studied theater at St. Louis Community College. In fact, I was I was one of two theater students at the time in the early nineties. <laughs> Was my parents were like very terrified about that, <laughs> um, and then uh, I got picked up. I got picked up by the Black Rep, and mm -hmm. I got picked up. I did tours, and I did a lot of stuff with St. Louis Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. um, I did even some theater at the St. Louis Science Center for a couple of seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I've been bouncing around town. And it's been a passion of mine since I was 18, 19 years old. Um, I always wanted to have the venue to produce shows. I didn't know what kind of shows I wanted to produce, but I knew that. Um, I could see, I could see myself at 18 and 19 doing that kind of thing. Um, when I got to St. Louis at 16, one of my heroes was uh, the founder of the Black Black Repertory Theater um, because I was like, this guy started a theater, yeah. <laughs> and that's amazing. He's a black yeah. guy and he started a theater. That's freaking amazing to me. And so we got to work together and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's been something I've always wanted to do. And so meeting in Suki um, six seven years ago, doing a Smoky oh, Monkey wow, show, yeah. it was. Uh, so it was really cool because I realized that there's this family that you get when you do shows that you don't get when you make software, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's what I do now. Uh, don't get when you do those things and that. There's a way of collaborating, working together that um, is pretty special and pretty amazing. And I fell in love with Suki there. I was like, all right, we're, I'm gonna figure out how to do something. And then two years ago, we were started talking about it. And then a year ago, it started making more sense. And then like six months ago, I was like, can we just do this? Yeah. yeah. So we did it. Yeah. Well, now you say you make software in, in, in your other side of life, and that yeah. sort of explains why you're so good with social media. You really... <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I was doing lighting design and set design for shows, and mm. I was 26, 27 years old. Um, I had one kid, and I was trying to figure out what, if I was going to go on another tour. Um, I really loved my acting life, and then um, I, I discovered that I could get into graphic design. 
-hmm. And I, I got into that, and that was, seemed really dangerous to me because you'd print 100 things and you find out or 1,000 things or 5,000 things and realize you made one mistake. So I was like, what if I get in the other side of this thing, this digital space, because the internet was still brand new. Um, and so I got into that and started and learn, learned to write code because at those days it wasn't the internet that taught you that. You went to Barnes and Noble or Library Limited and you got a book mm -hmm. and you opened the book and you read the book <laughs> and sometimes you're confused by it. So I taught myself how to do that. And then, yeah, I just landed at the right time when the internet was new and if you could write something, if you could write code, if you could figure out an algorithm um, and how, how to utilize it, then they would bring you in. And so I got very fortunate. Um, so I spent the last 20 years like in that space uh, doing those things, but always, um, and anyone I've been either dating or when I was married would say to me, are you acting right now? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, Ron, just go do a show. <laughs> just go do a show. Because it, it, it's something that I, I always miss in that collaboration mm -hmm. and, and how in the theater we work through problems, right? We just, we just talked about how, um, how the actors give them the script, we, 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 we collaborate and stuff like that, but it's a beautiful way to try to figure out the truth of something, right? Even if it's a parody already, the mm -hmm. truth that we can bring to folks and like, yeah, I love it. So software, it's very cool, I enjoy it. Now, now cool. Su Suki, your day job is, is closer to theater. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which, which is? As Stanley's patient program manager for WashU, the med school. And, yeah. and that involves? Uh, I have about 100 actors that you would probably recognize all of them um, who work with me and I train them on different cases probably like 50 different ailments that they might have and then they meet with the uh, the students or med students and they have like a mock exam and then uh, we give them feedback as to what worked what didn't work um, and just to help improve like their communication rapport and empathy skills so I love that job it's like all my favorite nerdums all put together medicine <laughs> teaching and theater so um, yeah and before that, I knew you, you worked at the Rep in, mm -hmm. in the imagine, uh, Imaginary Theater Company. I did. I, did. I remember seeing a, a uh, really fine production of A Thousand Cranes that oh, you directed you. there. I really loved that piece. And I mean, fabulous people to work for. And I mean, you're just surrounded by so much giving and so many um, artists, right? And you just, it's just a wonderful experience to get to work there and, and work with those actors. So. Now, one of, the, one of the very special productions that you brought here, and, and actually brought here twice, <laughs> uh, I think you know where I'm going, <laughs> yeah. is Cannibals, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the musical by the South Park folks. Yeah. And that was really delightful in a macabre <laughs> way. Thank you. But you, you said that at the time, that, that the last time you did it was going to be the absolute last time mm -hmm. <coughs> because they were working on a new version. Mm -hmm. So have you heard anything more from about whether there might be a, a new version of Cannibals? There is. It's by the guys who wrote um, Evil Dead the musical. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they've been touring. And it was supposed to come here to Westport, and then something happened, and I don't know what, about two years ago. Um, so then it was, I, I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to see this, I can't wait. Um, they wrote new music to it, so it still has some of the original pieces, um, but they added some great stuff, and I have not seen it live yet, but I'm hoping they bring it through on the tour. But your production was really delightful, and as I say, in, a, in an odd sort of way. <laughs> it's I, I an mean, odd it was, piece. you know, yeah. it, it's it's about a, a cannibal, mm -hmm. uh, a case of cannibalism, and, <laughs> it, you know, it, 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 it it, it's it's an odd kind of yeah. uh, subject for a musical, yeah. but it worked. It's a That's love story. It's a love yeah. story. <laughs> it's a cannibalistic <laughs> love story. What 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 appealed to you about this particular show? About cannibal? Yeah. Um, it was okay. So I'm I'm probably gonna catch it from a number of people about this, um, <laughs> but I hate Oklahoma. <laughs> like some of those old musicals, I'm like, oh, oh okay. boy. No, not the state, not the state, sorry, <laughs> and, um, and so this is sort of a parody, okay, mm -hmm. like, so my love mm -hmm. with parody, of, of that uh, musical. And um, it's just so odd, and the music's still really good, and it's just very smart. I mean, it's gross, but it's also very smart, and it has a lot of heart. And so it has, like, all these crazy things that should not necessarily go together, but fit together so perfectly. And I really wanted to do that. And I shopped it around to a number of different companies. And they all thought that was a great idea, but they didn't want to take the risk. So then I ended up self-funding it. Um, and people seemed to really like it. So I was And, you excited. know, the, another play that, that has some sort of macabre elements <laughs> that you also 
You, you don't know where I'm going on this theme. one. <laughs> Macabre elements, but that you directed extremely well was Richard the Third. Thank you. And that was a really wonderful production. And I'm curious as to what attracted you to that show, because I think some of the same things mm -hmm. that attracted you to, to cannibals would also be at work there. Yeah, the, the human condition. Um, there are elements of humor throughout Richard the mm -hmm. With I mean, with any of Shakespeare's uh, tragedies, they're probably funnier than most of his comedies in some ways. Um, but it's just the honesty in the character is who he is, um, unashamedly, right? Um, One of the very interesting things that you did in that production that was very sensitive to the text is that Richard is, is confiding with the mm -hmm. audience when he starts out. Mm -hmm. You're almost a co-conspirator. Completely. And then when he finally gets to be uh, the king, he suddenly is isolated and he mm -hmm. doesn't do any of the things that made him so weirdly attractive. Right. And in that production, that transition, Charlie right. Barron was your Richard and he won a theater circle award he for mm -hmm. his portrayal. But he made that transition so smoothly mm -hmm. and it just worked so well. Thank you. I, that, was, that was one of my favorite parts. And I feel like when you look at Shakespeare, right, so if you look at Macbeth and how Macbeth and Lady Macbeth are kind of co-conspirators, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's that moment where he just shifts and he goes a totally different, he kind of just goes a hard left and he leaves her behind. So in that way, the whole audience was Lady Macbeth, like right, we're co-conspirating, we're following along with him on this kind of thing. And then he just leaves us behind and we're hanging and we don't know what to anticipate. And it's that terror that I think plays really well. And do you um, think you might be doing any Shakespeare with the new company? Um, I don't know. Anything's possible, it, I suppose. Really, anything is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Suspense. Well, yeah. we'll you, see. you've given us lots yes. to look forward to uh, with, with this new company. And thank you for being here and letting us in on, on what you've been working on. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah. This was awesome. We're thank looking you. forward to it. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Thanks. I hope you like the reviews on Two on the Isle. You can click here to see other reviews and to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to be reminded immediately after we post. Enjoy the reviews!